This is going to be a project video for restoring a wooden kitchen table. As you can see, this table is pretty beat up. Uh, the, it's the paint stripper that I'm working with. Um, you know, the finish on here was kind of soft and squishy, and it had big scratches in it. Some were light. It was just in the in the finish, and some went down into the table. So, like I said, this is a pretty beat up table. Um, the, she, my daughter ended up getting this at a thrift shop thrift shop for $50 and asked if I would do a restoration to it so I said sure I give it a try and see what what I can do with it and like I said this is a, a different type of, of finish that's on here usually when I end up putting the, the paint stripper down on there that it ends up bubbling pretty aggressively it ends up having like all this alligator skin but this one just kind of shrank in on itself so I don't know if it's because it's an older type of wood finish or exactly what's going on but it still ended up coming off um, as I removed the finish underneath I could see that there was a mahogany veneer that was laid up on pine at least I, I believe it's pine uh, you know telling from the the end grains can be a little bit tricky sometimes but I think it was pine so I sanded the the veneer down with uh, 150 grit sandpaper on the dual action sander uh, there was some heavier scratches that was into the wood so uh, if you run into something like that, just kind of be cautious that you don't go through the, the veneer itself. Uh, you can end up having like little dips if you go too far into the, you know, trying to remove that scratch as well. But sometimes the scratch will look worse than what a dip would on the surface. So there is probably going to be a dip or two on the, the surface. But uh, so my daughter's my daughter's kitchen is gray with white. And it's not that she doesn't like the natural look of mahogany she just thought that it was a little bit too bright for the kitchen so she wanted me to turn it gray and i told her it's just starting out i was like there's no way i'm going to be able to turn mahogany gray it just it's it's never going to happen it's just one of those woods that it just doesn't like certain things and you know so it but if you looked on the side you can end up seeing that the the pine ended up turning gray uh, but the the mahogany just ended up getting dark this is the, the top coat sealer that I'm working with. It's a polyurethane, oil-based polyurethane. It's from Home and Lindsay. I don't know if that's more of just a local brand or a local thing, but any good polyurethane would probably do similar results to, to what I, I do here. Uh, I'm applying it with a paint roller. A little trick, too, with the paint roller, especially if you're doing using it with clear coat. One of my friends taught me a little trick that if you end up taking the paint roller before you start using it and just wrap it up in painter's tape and then you pull the painter's tape off, it'll remove a lot of the, the little fuzzes that are on there. It's not going to remove all of them, but it's going to help reduce it quite a bit. Um, that sanding sponge that I just used, I think what happened here is that that sanding sponge was used on a different project using a polyacrylic. Now the polyacrylic is going to have a different polymer than the oil-based polyurethane. And while I was you know, doing the scuff sand for the between coats, it, uh, I think that it ended up having some polyacrylic get into the polyurethane. And then when I applied a fresh coat of the polyurethane over the top, uh, I think both of them just freaked out. They didn't know what to do. So yeah, I had some issues here. Uh, you can see that. Pretty much anything that could go wrong with a clear coat finish happened on this project <laughs> right here it uh it crazed it bubbled it had fish eyes it like literally it just it was terrible so i had to start over this is the this is the the, the piece that i'm videoing uh it's going to show a piece coming up here where it's off camera and it's the big one of the big leaves so what I had to do was start over. I mean, I let that dry and then I stripped it all back down and removed all the finish the best I could. I wasn't going to put it into this video, but I thought, you know what, it's going to be a lesson that I ended up learning. So now anytime that I end up using a sanding sponge, I end up writing on that sanding sponge exactly what I use it for, whether it's raw wood, whether it's a specific sealer, I write it on that sponge. And hopefully that ends up helping somebody in the future. And it also was part of the finish that ended up getting me my final results. So I didn't want to be, you know, deceptive in any way or any shape or form. So I just kept it in here as a learning lesson as well. Um, 
So I ended up talking the daughter into going more with just darkening the mahogany color and enhancing it instead of, you know, trying to turn it gray, which just wasn't going to happen. So I ended up taking 12 ounces of the denatured alcohol and I add one half teaspoon of the Kita liquid dye brown, yellow, and red. That was the board that she said that she was okay with. That's the, that's the center leaf that goes in between. It's actually a, quite a cool mechanism that uh, there's, the, there's the two pieces. They're attached with a hinge. And then the one piece, it, it attaches to a rod. And then there's a hook that goes underneath that table. So you can fold it up on top of each other. And then when you pull those leaves apart, um, you can rest it underneath the table on the hook and then push the leaves back together. It's, I should have, I should have taken a video of it. It's a, it's a pretty cool mechanism. Anyway, so here I'm putting on a second coat of, uh, of that dye stain and I'm liking that color. So I'm kind of glad that the, that the black gray ended up, um, turning out the way it did because I, I like this color so much better and I think it just, it turned out pretty nice in the end see there you can see that hook and then that the bar um, that's where the the two center pieces will attach to um, overall I, I put on six coats of the polyurethane and um, I, I didn't want to have to worry later on because I'm going to be wet sanding and polishing the, the polyurethane at the end and I just didn't want to have to worry about going over um, you know any defect areas and worrying that I'm gonna get down into the finish but like I said it's an old table it was really beat up and you know there's there is some small defects in it and you know, kind of like little dips or something probably from when I was sanding um, but overall I think it turned out pretty nice if you notice the feet on this table you can see that they're they're pretty um, tarnished I ended up using the the polisher for uh, you know getting all of that and buffing all that out to bring back the the original color to it so that worked out pretty good it kind of tore one of my sponges up that I was using for polishing but it, it still worked out um, so here I'm going over with a 320 grit uh, in the heavier areas because on the edges the the poly was kind of building up so I just kind of took that and any significant defects that I ended up seeing I sanded that back out as well um, just to get ready for the next coat for, so since the sponge incident I ended up taking the red scotch bright pad and I just took a new one because I wasn't going to take another chance with having to restrip and resand and everything else again so that seemed to work out pretty well this is the oil based poly that I was talking about <clears throat> but again and pretty much any oil-based poly that's decent would probably do a very similar thing uh, ended up going over this part now with the with the foam brush I didn't want to be digging out any fuzz I didn't want to again I didn't want to take any chance it took a little bit longer but like I said I just I didn't want to take any chances because it's a, it's a lot of work when you end up putting you strip off a, a finish and then you apply a finish and then you have to strip it off again and resand uh, so this project did take a little bit of time here I'm going over with 400 grit um, you know just giving it a good one over uh, I, I think I tried to not hit the edges too hard with the 400 grit I just tried to even it out as best I could and I was gonna I'm gonna work on the, the edging more with the, like a 600 grit just because the 400 grit can be still a little bit aggressive uh, oh yeah, here I, so I ended up spraying on the, the last coat for, for this, but I'm going to tell you something with, <clears throat> with the oil-based poly, I don't actually have a ventilation system, uh, in, in the shop and, uh, <laughs> it took a while because it's a big table. So it took a while for it to clear out. Um, this is a stain additive that I'm actually testing. Uh, I can say that it works really good for wet sanding and like the polishing process. It helps to keep the uh, the soapy water, which is pretty much what I sprayed on there. It was just uh, like Dawn dish soap mixed with water. 
and then I put a couple of drops of that stain additive on and it just it helps keep it on there a little bit longer if I know it looks like I'm going pretty fast here but uh, it, it, I think when I get to 300 grit that I show the actual speed of of how I'm doing it it's it's a much slower process it'd be nice if I could work this fast but uh, it just <laughs> it's not, it's not something I can do and then I, I just have the two cloths, um, the one for when I end up spraying it down, wiping it off, and then I always keep one that's dry, uh, just to to clean it up at the end. Just check in for any defects using using the the light. Uh, there was a little bit of buildup on that edge, so I hit that with the 600 grit again, just to try to remove any of the excess that builds up on the edges. And it's just a progressive sand, um, you know, going from 600, then I went to 1,000. I mean, you could go to 800, but this was, this was already pretty smoothed out, so I wanted to actually just start the polishing process. There wasn't big swirls or, or scratches or anything in it. It actually started working out pretty well. So I just progressed from the 600 to the 1,000 grit. Um, again, it looks like this is going faster than what I'm actually am doing. It's it's a much slower process. Again, just checking defects, making sure I'm not going through anything, any sealers, uh, down into the finish or anything. Uh, so then I transition to the 2000 grit. Again, I just wet it down with the soapy water and a little bit of that additive. Just also helps it slide around um, and it keeps it keeps it open longer if, if that makes any sense it's kind of like a, a a light oil within itself but it's it's very mild mild stuff so i spray it down just wipe everything down check again for defects making sure i'm not getting too far into the sealer or anything which at this point when you're at a thousand grit two thousand grit you're probably not going to end up going through it unless you end up just holding it in one spot for a long time um, these, these are more of the polishing uh, grits, uh, especially with like a hard poly like this one was. It was pretty, it's a pretty good poly polyurethane. This is the actual speed that the polishing process was. Um, I'd probably be going a little bit faster with the like the 600 grit, but once I started getting to the thousand, two thousand, three thousand grit, this is the speed that I was actually going. Uh, the same thing would be true with when I get to the polishing process, which would probably be coming up pretty quick. But yeah, it's just, you know, I would go over one way and then I would go back over it the other way just to try to make things even and to keep, uh, you know, keep it moving. But you don't have to go fast, you, you know. I mean, there's probably guys that are much better at doing stuff like this than, than myself, but this is just the way that I ended up doing it, and I just thought it'd be a, a cool little project to share. So this is when I get into the polishing process. I'm using uh, Meguiar's. I should have taken better, better frame on that. So, but uh, I, oh, well, all I'm doing on here is putting like maybe six, six dabs on there, and then, well, then I'm I'm applying some of this additive which you know I, it, it did help uh sometimes the the pads can grab and just having a couple drops of that additive seemed to help you know just make it a smoother a smoother um polishing it's the best way i can describe it it just it felt like it was moving a little bit easier uh here i ended up just doing half of the table at a time and then i would go back do the other half of the table and then yeah this is about this is real time speed i believe i'm i'm doing this and then it'll end up picking up uh, i just want to make sure that's yeah okay so then i end up doing the other half and then i just go back over and do the entire piece uh, i went with the the number two first then i went with the number nine and then i went with the glaze um, so that was the the progression the pads I ended up getting that off of uh, Amazon. It was for it's for cars, but it works pretty good for you know polyurethane lacquer. 
most woodworking finishes as well so it, i thought it worked pretty well for for what i was doing um oh one thing too is that if you have a vacuum system hooked up to like your sander uh if you're going to be using you know like the the polishing you, you want to turn that off <laughs> i ended up uh having mine on for the, f the first run and i was like oh, that's not very good so i ended up having to take a hose off and clean it out a little bit and i mean it, it wasn't horrible but you know i just wanted to keep that clean so those are the pads that i used for for each of the um the mcguire's system for the polishes and that like the last one was this red pad and this is the the glaze and or showroom shine or something like that but it it worked out pretty well um you know i end up like i said i just put a couple of the you know dollops of that that on there and then i just work it around slow and you can kind of see when when you're getting into it as you're polishing how it starts to have a different sheen to it it just looks a little cleaner especially after you end up you know spraying it down with soap and water and you know, wipe it down and then take your dry cloth and wipe over it too and you also want to use like a microfiber cloth one that doesn't leave any lint or any type of debris that's going to be left because if there's some type of debris on there when you're doing the polish work it could end up scratching and just making more work for you i mean if that happens it's not absolutely horrible but this is just to be a, a preventative thing um so this i was trying to show what, it, what, it, what it's looking like it's so hard to show wood finish on camera i mean especially with as many lights that i have because i have heard so many times hey you need more lights you need more lights i think there was like six lights <laughs> that's that's on here so the camera ends up getting i don't know like little flashes or something like that when it hits the reflective surface like that so sometimes it's it just kind of like flashes and does weird stuff but um yeah here i'm just trying to show like the reflection that i mean it's it's a very deep looking finish it's it's actually really nice uh, the camera doesn't really do it justice um and this is the overall this is the results those are the two center pieces that i was talking about where they can fold on top of each other and then they fold up underneath the table but that's the whole entire table with the two leaves the two pieces that i showed on the camera and the two center ones and if you look at those feet those are the original feet that i just polished up with that that mcguire system i didn't sand them or anything just polished like i said it's a it was a beat up table um but i think overall it turned out pretty nice uh, as far as the, the the color goes i'm gonna say it's a little bit uh, darker color than what my camera's showing because this is my camera phone versus the, um, the the tripod camera that i was using and you know with it being so much light that uh it just ends up kind of washing out some of the color so maybe I, I may have to make an adjustment there because you know i think there may be too much light but um that's just looking at it in in the editing process it may end up looking much nicer for you guys as it's loaded up and stuff so anyways i thought it turned out pretty nice um it was a really beat up table and i think that all in all that you know turned out pretty nice probably sold it for I don't know maybe a hundred bucks <laughs> so i don't know i'm just playing it's it's my daughter's table so she's happy with it that's all that matters to me i got to make a video and do some some fun projects so anyways thanks you guys for watching and we'll see you soon